Okay, another one of these cases where it's three pages of symptoms. Uh, it comes down to he's got a CSF leak. The blood patches improve him uh, intermittently. So he comes down here. Let's let's take a look at the rest of the story. Uh, so here we can see this is the venous phase in the neutral position. You can see there's no styloid here. That's a beautiful non-calcified styloid, which is often the murder weapon. You don't have that. That's great. However, you're a, a big guy with a big, broad jaw, and we see this jugular looks a little narrow there. Then it kind of gets wider here. Now, we happen to do uh, a phase where we have you jut your jaw forward. We're always looking for the styloids to see if they're calcified, if we can pitch them forward with, with a, a dental appliance. And when you jut your jaw forward, look how open this jugular vein gets. So that's open on the left, jaw forward, and you're getting an appliance today. That's jaw back, prominent and impeding venous flow, uh, which is going to foster CSF leaks. And this is the other side. So here you go. Wherever you are, there's, there's neutral. And you can see how it gets wide there. And then when you jut your jaw forward, it stays open, patent all the way through here. So these shades of gray pathologies that are difficult to define, they're, they're pressure gradients. So we have somebody who has uh, CSF leaks after a trauma, and he has a hard time getting them to heal. Um, sometimes the blood patches work, sometimes they don't seem to. And this is, this is going to be a, a variable that's gonna mess with people. Um, so that's the venous drainage CSF uh, correlation. Uh, just to remind people, the CSF drains into the venous system by a pressure gradient. That is, there has to be low pressure in the venous system for the CSF to drain correctly. And if it's not, you're going to back up and have a tendency to, to leak CSF at uh, venous fistulas, things you were born with, little anatomical things, not to mention a torn dura or, or duras can leak. And some people are born with thinner duras than other. Um, other people have robust duras. It's just one of those things, one of those uh, anatomical variants. Speaking of anatomical variants, we're going to say you were born with a uh, articular pillar on the right that's really small. So at first I thought there was a, comp a compression fracture, but because you don't have any uh, history of breaking your neck or hurting your neck so badly that, that you, uh, you could say that that's when it happened. Um, but this is the tall pillar on the left, short pillar on the right, and... One of the things that we know about pathology is that it stands on a three-legged stool. That is, for somebody to really have a bunch of symptoms or have a problem, there has to be three things wrong uh, for you to finally have a problem. So you were, let's say you were born with this, you have a tendency to, to tilt this way uh, and you can get by, but then when you start injuring your spine, spine playing football or falling down and you mess your spine up in other ways, you, are, you, you can't compensate and adapt to so many different things. Um, so this is your pattern. This is one of the things that, uh, to try to adapt or, or adjust for. Um, and so we have the veins we've talked about. We got C talked about CSF leaks. We talked about this anatomical variant that you were born with. Now, here's the other. Let's show normal anatomy just to, to so this other thing jumps out at you. So this is how we trace the vertebral arteries. So you have very large shoulders, and we see people with big shoulders, when they fall down and they get injured, the, the lower neck, even the mid neck is stabilized, and all the forces has a tendency to go to the cervical cranial junction. That's where you, you whip lash more up in here. Now, uh, this is a normal uh, atlas. You can trace the vertebral artery all the way from the skull. Now, some people will have little calcifications of a ligament that goes across there, and it can, uh, give symptoms uh, depending on the nature of an injury. Now you, whoops, you have this armor. You're built with all this armor back here. And actually, I'm sorry, this is the venous phase. Let's get rid of that and let's show the arterial phase to demonstrate that. There we go. So here you can see that the vertebral artery is encased in bone here and encased in bone there. And you have an injury to the cervical cranial junction. You're, I'll show you in a moment where you're hypermobile here, hypermobile there, hypermobile in through here. When you fell, you, you got this got moving too much. 
and I can show you in a minute how the, these vertebral arteries are being tractioned and, and tethered and pulled on. Um, so here you can see that there's slack in the artery. It's okay, uh, but when you turn your head uh, in either direction, the slack comes out. Uh, you look at the slack there, it, 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 it goes away. So I actually, you know, we can do it this way. So there's left rotation. The atlas is coming off a C2 too much because of the injury. So you're, you're tractioning that in there. And I think that you're, you're irritating your arteries up in there with this excessive motion up in there. Um, and I've got some pretty good still shots of that in different angles to show. And there you are with right head rotation. Uh, and I, that is the main things that I wanted to run through. So now let's let's get these still shots up here. So because of that compressed, here, okay, here's here you can see the articular pillar on uh, the right side versus the left side. That's a significant difference. Uh, and I, we're showing the distance. Uh, between the, the joint spaces there, how it's different on the left side versus the right side. Um, and your chiropractor is going to have to know this pattern and try to adapt to it and, and the way you sleep. That's the other thing. Uh, so we got a man who has a, a, a crooked spine so with big shoulders. So when you lie on your right side, your pillow should be higher to try to bring this to neutral. And then when you lie on your left side, you want it to be lower so it helps to accommodate this. Um, you got to do everything you can to make this thing straighter. Uh, you don't want to buy a sports car we have to lean into to get in and out of. Um, and actually as far as possible places for a CSF leak, we're thinking cervical cranial junction, we're thinking right in through here at this articular pillar, right in at that level. Um, and then of course we already have the evidence of you getting blood patches in your lumbar spine and having it help significantly. Um, Good luck finding these leaks. Uh, yeah, the, here we're showing how, how much the atlas is rocked, I mean, the skull is rocked out on the atlas just in the neutral position. You're, you're going to try to adapt and keep your head level or your eyes level. A uh, big space between the odontoid and the atlas on the left and, and not on the right. Um, yeah, here I got some good shots of the slack there and the slack coming out. It pulls that. that vertebral artery is getting pulled tight on both sides. Uh, what that's causing as far as symptoms, uh, oh, you wearing a collar, uh, stop moving this thing, let this thing stop, let this, the swelling settle down, and you'll have a proof of concept as to what's causing what. Um, yeah, I actually measure the difference in the artic articular pillars. Uh, this is looking at you from the front. You, you can see how that vertebra twists. Now, in a moment, we'll show you the x-ray. So in, in the front, your discs are beautiful. They, they seem fully intact, like you don't have any miles on them. Um, and it, what's really interesting is what you look like on x-ray. Uh, matter of fact, I'm really dying to show you that. That's, that's, well, we did some alignment here. Um, on x-ray, I can see how somebody would have adjusted you from the right, but on CT scan, we can see that the atlas has gone too far to the left. And that's why we adjusted you from the left today, uh, C2. And to me, the name of the game to make you feel better is um, to get that CSF leak to slow down and stop. And I had one of those, there's a good shot, of jaw forward, not jaw forward. And structure affects function. Yeah, we'll get some Doppler studies on this to, to show that just to help drive that point home. Um, there's the other side. Okay. So, as a chiropractor, as an atlas orthogonist specifically, we see these this distortion, and the biggest thing is this, this lower angle. We call it a lower angle, 4.83 degrees. That's a lot. So I understand how the chiropractor would have come from the right side to try to open up this acute angle, but it's always going to be this. Now, can it be reduced to like three degrees? I don't know. So we got to try and, and see what we can do. Problem is we can't, we got to be careful with, with uh, fostering more CSF leaks. So your CSF leaks, the hierarchy of importance is that your CSF leaks has to be 
dealt with first, most importantly, so we can uh, not worry about making you leak anymore by going after this stuff. Um, but uh, again, we adjusted you from the left today uh, because we're not, we don't, well, because of this compression and there, we're treating you a little bit differently. Now here's a side view of your neck sitting and every chiropractor and their brother would think this is just absolutely wonderful, except that when you come back in this position, you, you get crooked. So really less of a curve where you're not put, loading that articular pillar so much would straighten you up. Uh, the worst thing you can do is lie flat on your back with no pillow. You go back into this position and you're, you're leaning on that compressed pillar there. It's like a tripod that's collapsed on the right and that's what makes you go crooked. Uh, we didn't take x-rays of you in different positions, but I, I can tell you if you don't slouch and you sit as erect as you can and you get, you get your neck to be as straight as you can, which is what a chiropractor would typically not want you to do, but the straighter you get this neck, the straighter the neck will be here. This is definitely because of that com compressed articular pillar. Any questions, anything you want to talk, me to talk about? And when you go to doctors, they, they like to put things in categories. Oh, you're, this is a high pressure headache. This is a low pressure headache. Oh, you're, oh we, did, we did an opening, uh, we did a spinal tap and your numbers were this, so you're low or you're high. But it, it is venous congestion, go high, pop a leak, and then does it go low? Is it, it's in a constant state of, of trying to stabilize. So yeah, you lie down flat. Some people lie down flat, they, they sleep. The the leak stops a little bit, they wake up, they're in high pressure because the, the jugular veins are, are compressed and the leak is not so much, then they go upright and it leaks more and they go into a low pressure. I, actually, do they go into a low pressure? Depending on, it, you're in this constant pressure. It, it's, Fluctuation. Right, so it's it's trying to, yeah, I don't like using those, those words. Mm -hmm.